In this video, I'm going to offer an alternative explanation for perceptions of bias in the media. I'm going to talk about an experiment that was done previously and then an experiment that I did recently with a Matthew Baum, my dissertation advisor. The first experiment that I'm going to talk about focused on something called the Beirut massacre. So I'm going to give you a little bit of history of the Middle East, um, but it's not too critical to understanding it. In the Middle East, there's a clash between the Palestinians and the Israelis. The Palestinians believe that the Israelis have occupied their land and um, they work to try and expel Israel um, from the land. Israel believes that that land was theirs all along. And so when they were when the Jewish state was created, they were just recovering that which was rightfully theirs. And so there's been a clash between the two groups, uh, especially back during the time that I'm going to be discussing, there were military clashes. Now, it's hard to talk about this because the Palestinians and the Israelis see this very differently, right? There were Palestinians who were going into the Israeli state and they were attacking and killing people, sometimes military people, sometimes civilians. For the Palestinians, they were freedom fighters. For the Israelis, they were terrorists. Right? That's much the same way that our founding fathers in the United States were seen as freedom fighters, whereas the British thought of them as re rebels, traitors to the crown. The Beirut massacre was an instance where Palestinians went into Israel, they attacked and killed some people, and then they fled back into Lebanon. That's where Beirut, Beirut is located. And there were camps that had large numbers of Palestinian refugees. Well, when the people who did the attack fled into the camp, they were followed by the Israeli defense forces. And they had an option. They could stop because they knew that going in was going to involve a lot of people dying, innocent people dying. They could stop and wait for the next attack and try and get them then. Or they could go in and go after the terrorists. And if there were other people who died, that's the consequences of war. Well, for those of you who are familiar with the Israeli Defense Forces, you already know what they did. They went in and they killed the, some of the terrorists and other people died as well. And hence, it's called the Beirut Massacre. Okay. In this study that was done, what the researchers did was they created a news report about the Beirut Massacre. And the researchers ensured that the coverage in the report that they did themselves, it wasn't an actual news report, was balanced. It showed the perspective of the Israelis and it showed the perspective of the Palestinians. It gave them equal time. It presented challenging questions and it presented e easy questions to both sides. So that's the setup. In this experiment, students are walking in and they're going to view coverage of the Beirut massacre. They think it's an actual news report, but it was actually put together by um, some researchers. And it's from this experiment that these researchers posit this idea of the hostile media phenomenon. And as you can see, the hostile media phenomenon is the idea that univalents tend to view balanced coverage as biased against their own views. Now, for what you've already learned about the memory-based model, this might make sense to you already. That when univalents see balanced coverage, they accept the information that supports their point of view. And then information that comes in that challenges their point of view, they counter argue that. And thus far, I've just talked about whether they store it in memory or not. I haven't talked about how they feel about hearing that negative information. That's where we're going to get to now. Well, the subjects in this experiment, the ones who were watching the news report, were picked out specifically because they had either strong pro-Israeli views or strong pro-Palestinian views. In other words, 
they were univalent. Both groups viewed the same news coverage, the news coverage with quote, air quotes because it was really done by the researchers. The researchers were interested in how they would react to this news coverage. And these were the findings of this study. And it's going to be important that you be able to explain this, not just if you get this question on the exam, you're going to need to be able to explain the findings, not just write down what uh, I'm, what's on the lecture notes. So the first thing that they found out is the pro-Palestinian and the pro-Israeli forces had completely different standards of what constituted fair fair coverage. The pro-Palestinian students thought that their side got really hard questions and the Israeli side got really easy questions. And it won't surprise you to know that the pro-Israeli students thought their side got really hard questions and the Palestinian side got really easy questions. So they were watching the same thing, but they felt like their side was being treated more harshly by the journalists who were in the, the fake news coverage. So even though they were seeing the same thing, they had completely different standards of what constituted fair reporting. They didn't think the journalists were being balanced. What the researchers, researchers also found out is something we refer to as selective recall. When they asked the subjects in the experiments what they remembered, to list as many things as they remembered about the, the coverage, what they found is subjects remembered the negative things said about their side far more than the positive things. They were agitated by the negative things. They were counter-arguing those negative things. And so those things were at the top of their head. And so when they asked them, what do you remember? Tell me as many facts as you can about the report. There was a long list of negative things about their side. And that was true for the Israelis and for the Palestinians. And then lastly, what they found out is that they believed that somebody who was neutral somebody who didn't have a strong opinion about this conflict or about what happened in Beirut, that they believed that somebody who was neutral would agree with the other side. The Palestinians thought that if somebody didn't have strong views on the, what happened with the Beirut, ma Beirut massacre and the conflict in the Middle East, they would, be, they would wind up supporting the Israelis or be more likely to support the Israelis when they were done with this experiment. And likewise, the Israelis thought that if somebody didn't have strong views on it, the pro-Israeli students, I should say, thought that if somebody didn't have strong views on this conflict, when they were done, they would be more likely to support the Palestinian side. Now keep in mind, they're watching the exact same thing. They're watching the exact same news report that the researchers have made strong efforts to ensure that it's balanced, that it's positive and negative towards the Palestinians and positive and negative towards the Israelis in equal degrees. And yet the Palestinian th students thought it favored the Israelis, the pro-Israeli students, and the pro-Israeli students thought it favored the Palestinians. Well, what was causing them to see the coverage as biased? Because if you ask the, the people in this uh, study, was this coverage biased? They would have all said yes. But what was causing them to see the coverage as biased? I would suggest that it's their, it was their own views, their own personal biases that was causing them to see bias. It wasn't in the news coverage. It was their own biases being reflected back at them. And that's important. Because what that allows for is the possibility that some of the bias that people see in the news isn't really in the news. 
It's their own biases being reflected back at them. And so uh, Matthew Baum and I conducted an experiment where we wanted to see if we could experimentally produce a similar result with subjects in the United States. And I'll explain that in the next video.